Welcome, and thank you all for joining us for this episode of the Correxy Podcast, an insider's look at all things commercial real estate. In this show, we cover a broad range of topics that cater to commercial real estate newcomers and industry leaders alike. I'm your host, Giannis Papadakis, Business Development Manager at Correxy, a comprehensive digital commercial real estate platform designed to empower commercial real estate professionals with the tool they need to discover and transact property. Today, we are thrilled to sit down with Brandy Smith and Sonia Bacano, two all-star leaders on the Crexy Auctions team, to discuss their careers and the state of commercial real estate auctions. But before we dive in, a little bit about our guests. Brandy Smith is a commercial real estate professional with 23 years of business experience, primarily within the commercial division of large financial institutions. Through a series of acquisition opportunities in the financial industry, Brandy worked with J.P. Morgan Chase for 16 years in a variety of leadership roles. Brandy transitioned into business development role at auction.com, now 10X, in 2011, and quickly elevated into a sales leadership position, guiding the institution through a series of acquisition opportunities in the financial industry. Brandy most recently works with Crexy in the role of institutional advisor, where in 2021, last year, she successfully helped close all institutional deals brought to market, resulting in a staggering 100% sell-through rate. Wow. Uh, also with us today, we have Sonia Bacano, who leads operations, contract compliance, and closing for the transactions team at Crexy. She and her team support our internal deal teams, along with our broker, buyer, and seller clients, ensuring compliance and execution. She is known for her hands-on approach and dynamic, passionate delivery while fulfilling the internal, external customer's needs. She joined Crexy in 2019, bringing over 12 years of experience of commercial real estate and transaction closing, co-managing our largest transactions clients, Clark County. Her expertise covers a broad range of strategic vision, solid execution skills, and transaction lifecycle management. She stays well connected with customers to ensure broad market needs are being incorporated into the product development. Along with her real estate licenses, she has several years of formal training coupled with a Six Sigma belt in project management. As a leader, her job is to develop more leaders and challenge the status quo to improve product quality and obtain greater market share in the industry. One goal is to grow the female presence in the commercial real estate space, opening future opportunities for women who have the desire to be part of what is always evolving in a fast-paced business. Both, welcome to the podcast. Let's dive in. Well, first, I'd love to begin by asking some questions about your career paths and how you got to where you are today. How did each of you first get involved in commercial real estate? I'll take that one, Sonia, first. Um, so I have been primarily in banking. I started out my career in the banking sector. And um, as my bio stated, I did several different, um, you know, I had several different positions within the banking world. Um, I worked on the origination side. So I did some securitization, some underwriting, um, project management. And then um, in the downturn, then I um, I actually was part of the note sale team. So we did portfolios um, on the note sale um, team and I wrote the procedures as well. Um, and then um, from there, I transitioned to um, an auction platform and I worked there for seven years um, and then took a couple of years off. And now I'm here at Crexy. Awesome. And Sonia, how did you first get involved in commercial real estate? So my career started out in the residential lending space. And um, back when the market tanked, 2007, 2009, I started to explore different avenues. I have a real passion for real estate. So I wanted to find somewhere that I can really just grow in real estate. So um, naturally, commercial real estate attracted me. Uh, I had an opportunity to work with and really create and develop an online trading platform, um, specifically focusing on commercial real estate. Amazing. Um, I'm curious, who were key mentors for each of you that you had along the way? And what were some of the important you know, lessons that were learned kind of coming through those formative years in the space? 
So I had a couple of mentors, um, two strong women leaders. Um, one of them was in the banking industry, and she was a mentor for me. She really gave me the start in my commercial banking career. Um, I didn't have the resume to um, really um, be a part of commercial lending, um, but she gave me the opportunity. Um, and then I had another one. Um, she's a director at Fannie Mae. And, um, you know, both of them had in common, they were strong leaders in, uh, and I really watched how they navigated um, a man's world. That's awesome. So for me, uh, our very own Mike DiGiorgio. <laughs> um, I always grew up hungry for success, always worked really hard and just would not accept failure still to this day. I am extremely driven and um, I had the opportunity to work with Mike in the past at a former employer and uh, his drive and ambition always really stood out to me. And one of the lessons that I learned from him and I, I feel like he still preaches it to this day, uh, really just show up and own your business. So even if you don't necessarily own the company that you're showing up to every day, um, get there, approach every day, thinking of it from all aspects of the business and think of it as if you are that owner. That's, that's excellent advice. Um, both of you, I can say, are leaders, exceptional leaders, both within the industry and within Crexy as well. What do you feel prepared you to become the leaders that you are today? Uh, I could start with that. So the biggest thing for me is putting people first. Um, I have had small teams to very large teams, and I'm a firm believer that um, putting into your employees and growing leaders is really the key to success, encouraging them to push themselves past their limits, to um, develop into more and more every day. Um, one way to do that for me, you know, everybody has something that motivates them. They show up, wake up every day with something driving them. And our clients, it's something's driving them to buy and sell real estate, right? So. Similar to that, employees have something that is motivating and pushing them to succeed and finding that and um, really encouraging them to grow through that motivation is, um, is really a key to success. Excellent. Yeah, I agree, Sonia. For me, it's, um, it's all about the people as well. So internally, um, it's leading um, your team and, um, you know, mentoring them so they can grow and become um, the, um, the employee that they want to be. Um, and then externally, it's fostering those relationships with your, your sellers, your vendors, your, your buyers um, and brokers. And, and so I think key to leadership is really um, about the relationships. Relationship and everybody if you ask anyone in this industry, they'll tell you relationships are everything. Um, and, and really in, in other industries as well, it's really about being able to connect with people and you know, grow those relationships in the space. Now, moving on, uh, as the episode's title suggests, let's talk about online auctions. We've established we're both leaders in the commercial real estate auction space, which itself has changed dramatically in the last you know, five, 10 years. Historically, how have owners used auctions to transact? So I can take that from a seller's point of view. When I was in the banking industry, um, I actually used um, an online um, auction platform. And the way that we used it was small balance, tertiary market, um, where we didn't have um, a good market or database um, of buyers. And so we looked to um, auction. Um, for that purpose. And I can add to that um, from what it looked and felt like it's taking it back to trustee sales. Those were facilitated on courthouse steps. Um, I've even seen auctions be held in hotel ballrooms with live auctioneers standing up. 
Um, and you have an audience of buyers ready to bid. And, you know, these buyers are there to perform. Once you're deemed the winning bid, you're signing the contract on site, your earnest money is due. So you have buyers there with cashier's checks, sometimes even cash ready to submit their money. Like a, like a duffel bag or a briefcase of cash ready to go? Briefcase, I've seen it. <laughs> Do they come handcuffed to it? Uh, <laughs> um, well, that, that's... And that wasn't very long. Yeah, that wasn't very long ago either, Sonia. No. Uh -uh. And I, I do think they still hold courthouse um, auctions on the courthouse steps. Do people have to stand six feet away? How far away do you, can you be from the person, you know, yelling uh, the, uh, the current bid? Um, the, you know, which leads to my next question. You know, the, the tools have changed dramatically in a very short amount of time. Um, while online auctions have uh, been a thing for a while, only I would say recently we've seen this massive uh, change or paradigm shift from how they were being used to how they're now um, really being um, you know, fully engaged by both institutional and private sellers for all types of product. Can you talk a little bit about how they have changed today and how the technology has transformed both in terms of the sentiments around it as a transaction method and you know just the tech and the tools itself? Yeah, so you know historically auctions were thought of as kind of a clearinghouse, right? Distressed properties, a liquidation warehouse kind of thing. Um, now, I feel like we've showcased here at Crexy that that's not the case. These assets are not always distressed. Um, most recently, we sold Beltway Business Park, the largest online real estate transaction. And um, the activity it created was surprising, um, extremely large. We had 35,000 page views, five fully approved bidders showing up on auction day. And um, the property ended up selling 50 million over the original reserve. So that with our tools, we were able to deliver that for our clients, right? Um, this is a client who has pretty stringent processes and requirements. So the the key for them is to provide full transparency, a fair playing field. And with our tools, we were able to deliver that to the client. Um, also what that's doing is, you know, taking the control and giving it to the seller, allowing buyers to all have a fair look at a deal and participate. Um, whereas traditional offline real estate, not always, will a user get visibility to it or have a shot at even submitting an offer? Right. Yeah, I would echo that, Sonia. Um, it's really the technology that's evolving um, and where we see it today. And there's complete transparency from beginning to end. Um, it, the sellers will be able to follow the, um, the process um, you know, individually um, on our platform. You've got um, transparency on reporting um, and where we are at specifically at any given day. So um, it's definitely um, evolved and it's going to continue to evolve. So it sounds like there were already several benefits from a disposition method to auction, but this recent kind of ground surge of new tech uh, and you know accessibility through platforms that are leading the way like Crexy, but there's even more benefit to sellers in that you can reach more faster. You've got more transparency on how it's being executed. Um, and you're not, you're not beholden to a physical location like you would be with a in-person auction on, you know, courthouse steps or, you know, a, a ballroom, so to speak. Um, what differences or what would you say differentiates Crexy's auction platform from other options on the market? So for me, I would say it's people, process, and pricing. 
So on the people side, um, we've got a great team that um, we're very experienced in um, real estate and on um, auctions. Um, and then the process, we've got, um, you know, best in class process. Um, we're very, um, you know, Sonia and I, we work for, on the front end and the back end to ensure that we have a seamless process uh, for both the, the buyer and the seller. And then pricing, we definitely um, um, beat out our competitors on the pricing side too. Yep, and and I agree. I think um, you know the Crexy team is really what sets us apart. Yes, our user base is um, extremely larger than others, and you know I think that's driven because we have 150,000 listings on the site at any given time. Just on the for sale side, that doesn't even touch the for lease. So a ton of eyes on the site and on the deals, especially if they're time sensitive and set in an auction format. Um, we have a great marketing team that is driving buyers to these listings and making sure they're seeing it at the right time in the transaction, giving them plenty of time to do their underwriting prior to the auction. So um, along with those benefits. Um, the biggest thing is, is the team behind it. Uh, my team specifically, we're acting as a neutral third party during closing. And you know real estate and all the individuals involved in a transaction. You have buyers, sellers, attorneys, brokers, title, escrow. So um, really having my team in place to spearhead the deal all the way through closing, meeting every milestone in escrow. It's, it's extremely important to manage the communication and just funnel the deal all the way through to closing. Okay, uh, looking forward, what are each of you most excited about coming up in the world of commercial real estate auctions? So I'm excited to, um, work with new sellers and, um, you know, really get them to trust the platform, trust our team, and let us show them through data and results that we are the marketplace to go with. We do bring the buyers and our website is reliable, not just for auctioning a, a, a listing, um, rely on it for all the different avenues that we have. Our technology is always evolving and um, we have our for sale listings, we have our auction platform, um, data intelligence, marketing, our closing dashboard, everything you need is on Crexy. So to see sellers come, realize that, love it and come back and use it is um, really exciting and really, what we're looking full adoption across the board and for people, users, clients to realize Crexy is all I need. Very good, Sonia. You, you did really well on that one um, from beginning to end. So I was going to say and echo your comment. It's educating the, the sellers um, on the platform and having them adopt the platform because once they use the platform, um, I believe it's gonna, they're gonna continue to use it. So, um, you know, to Sonia's point, it's not just auction, it's all of our services um, at Crexy. It's the, um, the leasing, the comps, intelligence. Um, you know, we've got it all. It is a one-stop shop. Yeah, especially when you're touting a 100% sell-through rate on your uh, institutional auction sales, that's, I absolutely mean, un unignorable um and uh congratulations on that that's uh, i mean an accomplishment by any measure um uh, but it, especially in the world of auctions where you know it, it's 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 all about educating yeah you're right it's all about education um and you know i'm i'm wondering what challenges do you see you know kind of down the road in the auction space Uh, so I can say that we're growing internally as a team, and with that, we're reaching a lot of um, new 
buyers, new sellers, uh, new brokers. And so keeping up with the demand, it's a great problem to have, but um, I think that's gonna be something that we see coming in Q2 here. Really um, a flood of business coming in and we're ready for it. Um, I think that we can manage it with our product and engineering team always one step ahead and thinking of how to evolve and be ahead of what the market needs so that um, we're ready to take on that business. Uh, along with that, we have an amazing marketing group, not just uh, brand marketing, but asset level marketing. We reach multiple buyers on every listing, um, you know, whether they participate or not, <laughs> that's a different story, but we're getting the eyes on it and they're doing the steps to underwrite the deals. And um, that's very encouraging to see. Awesome. Agreed. Yep. Now, uh, I wanted to kind of circle back and touch on something that uh, Randy had mentioned earlier when um, going over kind of her entry into the commercial real estate space. Yeah, it, it is by and large a male dominated space. Both of you are you know, exceptional leaders within uh, auction and transaction management outside and within Crexy. Can you talk a little bit about what it's been like, um, you know, rising up and existing and, and succeeding in a male dominated space and kind of what that experience was like? Yeah, for me, it's really been um, working harder, always feeling like you need to work harder, you have to be uh, prepared. Um, and you have to speak up. Um, so you have a voice. So, um, you know, throughout my career, I've um, really been driven um, and want to succeed and want to lead. Um, and then in that male dominated space, um, it's, it's preparation. It's when you're in that room with all the men, um, you have to make sure that what you're saying is accurate um, and that you are confident in what you're saying and you articulate yourself well. Um, so they do hear your voice. Uh, uh, Sonia, any? Uh... Yeah, so I'm always encouraging um, individuals to get involved, regardless if it's a male predominant industry or not. Um, I always preach that you should follow your passion. And when you do that, it stops feeling like work and starts feeling like purpose and fulfillment. So I've always felt really welcomed in this space. I'm confident in what I do, what I bring to the table. Um, the biggest thing for me is respect and professionalism. And um, I feel like that exists in this industry. Um, I don't, I would hate to see any female be intimidated thinking that there's not a space for them in commercial real estate. Um, it, it should be more of a passion dri driven thing rather than, um, can I do this or not? Um, so I think that that's the advice I would give. If you have the desire to be in this position, in this business, don't pay attention to male or female. Do your best, show up, respect everybody equally and um, come and own your business and kill it. Right, <laughs> right. Um, Brandy, any uh, additional advice you wanna share with newcomers to the commercial real estate space, You know, particularly young women or other diverse groups who are new to the industry? I, yeah, so Sonia touched on it as far as the, your passion. And, um, you know, going back to, you know, being male dominated, um, it can be, um, you know, it doesn't matter if it's male dominated or not. Um, um, you always need to do your best. Um, and then you forget that who is in the room and what gender they are. Um, and so to Sonia's point, the respect has always been there. Um, you know, I haven't, you know, seen, you know, any disrespect because of gender and, um, you know, follow your passion and, um, you know, get in here if this is, you know, something you want. 
Um, and then, you know, mentorship, you know, find a mentor um, as soon as you, you know, you land a position, um, regardless if it's in commercial, commercial real estate, um, real estate or not. It's, um, you know, it's learn and grow. That's great advice. Any advice for sellers or brokers looking to explore auction as a disposition option? Yes, I, I can definitely say um, to brokers and, and their clients, um, come to auction not just with distressed assets. Our data has proven that we can sell high-class assets and um, we've proven to sell them well over the reserve. I, I would be remiss if I didn't bring up Beltway Business Park. <laughs> Again, that was a huge success for us across the board. Um, but more importantly, it showcased what we can deliver from a Crexy perspective. And uh, what that does is give every buyer a chance to look at the property, have the ability to submit an offer, every step of the way, every price that comes in, you the buyer now has the ability to counter bid and, and take that property as your own. And that's, that's not always the case if it's um, not online. Right, right. And you're right, size is not a, uh, a limiting factor. Last year, uh, you broke the record for single largest transaction online at over 200 million. Um, so if anybody is out there that wants to break the record again this year that has a deal they think is worth more than that, <laughs> bring it on down. We're happy to go two for two. Um, Brandy, any advice you have for sellers or brokers that are looking to explore auction? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's no longer, you know, distressed assets um, in tertiary markets, um, you know, Sonia had been a part of the, the 200 million. Um, and then we recently sold um, a 512 unit multifamily um, for a GSE. And, you know, we, we crushed it. We had over 4,000 page views and 190 um, executed CAs. Um, and, you know, that sold um, in excess of 14 million. Wow. Wow. Uh, breaking records right and left. Love it. Uh, any advice for buyers that are looking for value add properties via auction? You know, if somebody is new to the auction space, but maybe has been existing in, you know, traditional, you know, listings and making traditional offers, what tips or advice do you have for them looking at an auction as a way to pick up some deals? So my advice just coming from, you know, a closing perspective is to get your eyes on it sooner rather than later. Um, auction does provide certainty of close for our sellers. Um, so it's important acting as a buyer on the platform, dive in, do your due diligence before auction day. We have a 45 day marketing period. So use that time wisely. And Brandy, any advice or tips for buyers looking for value add properties via auction? Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, to just um, go off of what Sonia had mentioned, you know, one other thing is the transparency of the process. So the um, buyers can um, make sure that, you know, they get the last look. So they have the ability to buy a property on auction um, if they want it. Um, they, as long as they're the highest bid, then, you know, they can definitely win it. That's great advice. And, you know, Personally, having been a part of this auction team and, you know, getting to work, you know, alongside and, and under both of you has, has been very uh, educating for myself. Uh, I think for buyers that, you know, are looking to pick up properties via auction, register and bid. It's free to lose an auction. And uh, I would say that the buyers that I see um, really making you know meaningful impacts in their portfolios are constantly registering for deals and, and bidding on deals even if they're not winning on those deals the ones that they do win you know they're bidding you know a number they like for it and sometimes they get it at that number which ends up being you know a big win for them in the long term so i think it's it's you know get on there get engaged register and just start bidding on auctions since again it's free to lose winning's another story <laughs> 
but uh, it is free to lose an auction. Uh, any final thoughts well, before? They, oh, go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. As I was going to say, um, they have the opportunity. You know, you hear um, from the buyers that you know out in the the world of um, commercial real estate. Um, the big companies are usually the ones that get the last look and they have the opportunity to, to buy out from under them. Um, and then, you know, with our platform, um, everyone has the opportunity to, um, to buy. So, um, you know, we give, um, you know, give them the advantage of that. Yeah, I, I never thought about that um, as a buyer, if you keep losing deals out to someone else that has a relationship, you know, the only relationship you need is, is with Crexy because now you're on the same footing as all of the yeah. other buyers when you're participating in an auction like that. That's, that's kind of a, a game changer in, in a lot of ways. Absolutely. Yeah. So just one example, having a, you know, someone that is also a seller on our platform, um, I was asking them how, um, you know, how they've been doing in the past year. And they said they've been really busy on the buy side, but it's not buying. It was actually just underwriting. And because the, the larger shops would get that last look, whereas they're not only are they selling on our platform, they're also looking to buy on our platform because they do have that ability. Right. Right. Well, I really appreciate both of you for joining us. Thank you for coming and sharing your insights, especially on such important and timely topics. We absolutely appreciate your time. And I know you're both very busy. So thank you for taking the morning to sit down with us and educate us on auctions. Thank you, thank you. for having us. And where can people find you online if they wanna get in touch, yeah, email, social media, LinkedIn? All of the above. <laughs> Find us everywhere. LinkedIn is great. Well, thanks to everyone who tuned in today. If you enjoyed this episode, do not miss the next one. Visit go.crexy.com forward slash podcast and sign up to get the next episode delivered straight to your inbox. Of course, you can also subscribe to the Crexy podcast on your favorite podcast app or check out our YouTube channel for video recordings of each episode. Take care and be sure to tune in next time. Mm -hmm.